In the last video, we set up our development environment so that we can build a WAR file. Remember, I'm just using Eclipse just for the videos. You can use any development environment that you prefer as long as you know how to use it. If you are able to build a WAR file in the previous video, then you're good to go. And the goal of this section of the course is to deploy that WAR file to an installation of Tomcat that we're going to run inside a container. And we're going to do that by writing our own Docker file to do so. We have seen previously a Docker file, and on screen now is the basic Docker file that we wrote before. The previous one was just an Ubuntu base image that we installed, a layer which included the OpenJDK, and the command was a bash shell. So we ended up with a container that we could run Java commands which was great. We need to do something similar though, so that we have a Tomcat server in the container. And I imagine that's going to be a bit more complicated to do, but the pattern is going to be the same. We're going to need in this video to start by deciding on which base image should we start with. And once we've decided on that, we'll probably have a line for the maintainer. Now, I did mention previously that the maintainer field is now deprecated in Docker. But as I said, it doesn't matter if you use that or if you prefer using labels or you could even skip that line altogether. Then we might have some extra commands to install extra stuff into the container. And we'll need to think about what the default command for that container is going to be. So we could do what we did previously. We could start from a very raw base image like an Ubuntu distribution. And then we could run lots of commands such as installing the JDK, install Tomcat, transfer the config files across and all of the rest of the usual kind of config um, steps that I guess you would do if you were installing Tomcat onto a desktop. But I hope you've got the feeling by now that this is probably not going to be necessary because there's probably some kind of predefined image that will probably do all of that work for us. Well, you know that Tomcat is used the world over for Java applications. It's well used, well understood. I bet somebody's already created a Tomcat image that we can use. Now here on Docker Hub, and in fact, this is another video that I've re-recorded for the uh, 2019 update of the course. The only reason that I've done this re-record is that the structure of the Docker Hub page has changed a bit. And I wanted to bring this video up to date. And there have also been a few very minor changes to the process that we're about to follow. But really, the original version of the videos would be just as good. But the point is, I'm here on Docker Hub, and I reckon there's a very good chance if we search on Docker Hub for Tomcat, yes, there is indeed an official image already available on Docker Hub that we can use. So if we follow the link here to Tomcat, this is one of the Docker official images. So we know that it's been well tested and it has proper support and all the rest of it. And so we can grab this image and we can use it as a base image that we're going to have to do very little work to build on top of it. Uh, now, the only complex thing really about choosing a base image for Tomcat is there are a lot of versions of Tomcat available. Going down to the description, now I've got to be careful here. Everything that you're seeing here is at the time of recording, November 2019. The Docker Hub page is constantly being changed and moved around. And of course, by the time you watch this, there will be some new versions of Tomcat potentially released. So you might have to do things slightly differently by the time you watch this video but it all should still work. On the description link here, there's a list of all of the tags, which you know by now are just different versions of the image. And there is a long, bewildering list of available tags. Now, the reason for this is, of course, there are multiple versions of Tomcat available. And generally speaking, images are not removed from Docker Hub. I hope that makes sense. If you if they were to remove an image from Docker Hub, then they're potentially breaking a lot of people's project work. So Docker Hub really isn't an archive for images and you should expect images not to be removed. So they build up over time. 
And at the time of recording, it looks like the very latest versions of Tomcat are version 9. All of this is at time of recording. Actually, the 8 versions are the ones most commonly used on projects. But going down the list, there's also some version 7s as well. Now, it's not just Tomcat versions that are different. Of course, Tomcat runs on Java, so each of these images has a different version of the Java development kit built in. So it might be, for example, that you want to run Tomcat 8, but you want to run the very latest version of the JDK. Again, time of recording, that happens to be JDK 13. Now, of course, there's new JDKs now every six months, so this might be 15 or 20 by the time you watch this. But you might need to run on an earlier version of the JDK. And again, time of recording is most projects still have not made the leap across from Java 8. So you might need to use JDK 8 with Tomcat 8. So you could pick this version of the image here. So there's a sort of a combinatorial explosion here that they, there's so many of them because it's all the combinations of Tomcat version and Java version. But it's not just Tomcat version and Java development kit version. You'll see that some versions of these images, I'll hover over this one as a random example, have a suffix of dash slim attached to them. And you'll find, I think, the way this works, I've not checked every one, but I think you'll find for every version, for every combination of JDK and Tomcat version, there will be one version with slim and one version without slim. Now, the idea behind this is that the slim version is the smallest possible image size that they could have come up with. And they've achieved that by reducing the number of tools that are shipped with that image. And by tools, I mean the tools that are shipped in your distribution. So the non-slim version, it can be hard to see which the non-slim version is, but it's this one here is the non-slim version. So this is version 9 of Tomcat with version 11 of Java using the OpenJDK, but there's no slim on there. Now, what this image will have is it will, there's going to be a full Linux distribution inside that image. So there's going to be a lot of command line tools basically available in that image, which can be very convenient, especially if you're debugging the image. But when you're actually deploying the image, oftentimes you're never going to look inside the image. You're never going to do an exec into the image. You just want to run it. And in that scenario, the slim images are preferred because they're going to take up a lot less space in your deployment environment. And especially if you're doing microservices, you're going to be deploying a lot of them. So you're going to find it's very common to have a sort of a luxurious version and a slimmed down version. It's up to you to choose which you go for. Now, the main reason that I'm re-recording this video for 2019 is that when I originally recorded this course, the, they didn't have Dash Slim. They instead had a Dash Alpine version of every image. Now, Alpine, you might be aware, is a very slim Linux distribution, and they made all of their slim images using Alpine. But for some reason, and I think it was a security problem emerged with Alpine in the past, they basically came to this page and removed all of the Alpine images and replaced them with the slim images. Now, I'm not fully aware of exactly what happened there, but it's certainly true that there's now no Alpines appearing here. And that did confuse quite a few viewers of the previous course. Actually, you could still, and you can today at the time I'm re-recording, you can still use those Alpine images. It's just they don't publicize them anymore. They have not been removed from Docker Hub. Oh, something else to notice is that uh, many of these tag names are just aliases of each other. So I'll select the top one at random. If I were to use the tag name 9 JDK 13 Open JDK Oracle, then I'm actually going to get exactly the same image as using 9.0.27 JDK 13, etc. It's making version 9.0.27 the default if I just basically with this one, I'm just saying I want version 9. 
Now this will definitely, almost certainly, have changed by the time you watch this because as they release new versions of Tomcat 9, that number's going to tick up. Let's say 9.0.54 is the latest one, then they'll probably update this so that the just the bare 9 will default to 9.0.54. So be careful here. Now I recommend that in most cases you should use the most specific tag name. The reason for that is you want to know what's inside your image. It could be, I doubt it would be the case with Tomcat because they're a very professional outfit and they do all of this properly. But if you were to use this tag here, 9-JDK13, everything might work today, but in six weeks time, that might be aliasing a different version as this version increases. And you might find that all of a sudden your images break when you rebuild them. As I say, that's unlikely to happen with Tomcat, but it would still be much better engineering, in my opinion, to use specific image version you can. And with that in mind, there's often, probably almost always for any particular Docker image, there's often a special label which is latest. Now I had to do a control F actually to find the latest tag. If in your Docker file, you don't specify a tag, so in this case, if I just said from Tomcat, then it will pick up the image that has been tagged latest. Very strangely, at the time of recording, you'll notice that the latest tag in Tomcat is actually tagged to version 8, 8.5.47, even though there's this whole stream of version 9s of Tomcats. And that's just because, again, at the time of recording, it's the version 8 series which Tomcat considered to be the main line of development. So that will certainly change over time. And I would strongly recommend, actually, that you never rely on the defaults using latest because you just don't know what you're going to get if you use latest. But for the video recording, I'm going to be going for Tomcat 8 and I'm going to use JDK 8. Now that is kind of important because the WAR file that we've just built is just based on the version of Spring that I've used and various other things, it does rely on a JDK 8. It's not going to run on the modern JDKs, which is fine. And these images all support that. So I definitely need a JDK 8. I guess I could use a Tomcat 9 running on JDK 8, but to me at the time of recording, Tomcat 8 sounds like the safest option. So I'm going to use then the version which is tagged 8.5.47-JDK8-OpenJDK. As open JDK. As I say though, you could use any of these aliases and it would probably still work, but I much prefer using the most specific version. Now, I reckon choosing the base image was probably the hardest thing in this entire exercise. So we need to write a Docker file and we need to decide where it's going to go. Now, for now, this is not actually the best place, but for now, I'm going to put it in the root of the project in the Fleetman web app folder. And this is just going to be new file, just a plain file. And it needs to be called Docker file with a capital D. And we will move this file into a better location a bit later on in the course. A bit later in this video, I'll show you why this isn't perhaps a very good location for that Docker file. But we can get started now. We're going to be building this file from the base image. I often forget to put the actual name of the repository in though. Remember, we are working with Tomcat here. So that's the first thing you need. And then the tag is following the colon. So it's a bit awkward, this one. It's 8.5 points. I'll go back to here, 47-JDK8-JDK8-OpenJDK. Open JDK. Now, as I say, at the time of recording, if I'd have just said from Tomcat, then that's going to default to the latest, which would pick up this image for me when I'm recording. But as I say, that would be really dangerous if you did that then you might be picking up Tomcat 12, which is using JDK 13, and that definitely wouldn't work with the code that I've supplied. So be specific there. I, I will put a maintainer in, as I mentioned in the previous videos, 
this has now been replaced with labels, but I know that on future videos I'm going to be using the maintainer, so I might as well carry on. So that can be your own name and if you and if you want your email address. In the previous Docker file we ran some commands at this point, but given that the image that we're building is going to inherit everything that was in the in the base image, we're going to have the Java development kit installed. We're going to have Tomcat installed. Not going to be much to do other than we're going to need to transfer our war file in. And I'll actually cover how to do that in the next video. And then just start up Tomcat. So the final line is going to be the command line. How do we know what to put in for the command? Well, you might know that there is a shell script that Tomcat uses to bootstrap itself. It's called Catalina. But that's all right if you know that. How could you have worked that out for yourself? Well, any good image on Docker Hub will have a good description. Now, the Tomcat description happens to have all of its tags listed. Uh, you can also find the tags on the tab here on the right hand side and there's a little search engine now. This is a relatively new thing. There's a search engine here for all of the different tags. But the description is actually more like a readme. So it's a free form content. So you won't always find the images listed on the description. But what we do have is a little bit of a reference manual here. A lot of information there, but they tell us pretty much on the first line that to run the default Tomcat server, we need the CMD instruction of Catalina.sh and run. So we could have found it from there. So that's going to make this command be the default command when we run our new image. So although we have some way to go with this Docker file, we definitely need to work out how to transfer the war file in. I reckon we're very nearly ready to at least try to run this basic skeleton. So I'll wrap this video up now and in the next video we'll have a go at running a container.